What's up guys, Billy here, and today we will be discussing some of the changes made to the DJI Spark in the latest firmware update. This update, version 01.00.0600, was pushed out on August 21st, 2017, and is around 92 megabytes in size to download. Here's a list of the changes implemented in this firmware update. You can pause the video to read them over, but now, let's go through these a bit more in depth. Now usually with an update this small, I'll hold back from making a video just because there's not a lot of brand new features. In other updates, we get these new features that need explaining, but there is one thing that I want to go over and that is the fact that this is a mandatory update. We'll talk more on this at the end of the video. First up is the battery firmware update. Within the patch notes, it states optimized battery management to improve stability. Because of this, we need to update each battery before flying. I purchased the fly more combo, so I'll have to update both of my batteries. Well, I would if both of them still worked. For some reason, this one has basically turned into a paperweight. It won't hold a charge, it won't turn on, it really won't do anything. I'll have to get this figured out, but just know that a battery update is available and will require separate updates. Next is regarding the DJI goggles and their use with the Spark. Now before this update, we were able to use the actual goggles with the Spark basically just as an FPV screen. Now within the patch notes, it says support DJI goggles and I was wondering why they included this within the patch notes because we were already able to use the goggles with the Spark. Basically what they meant by support DJI goggles is now in coordination with the newest firmware update for the goggles, we're able to take advantage of the head tracking features. That's head tracking flight and head tracking gimbal. It's also available to now be used with the Phantom 4 and Inspire 2. And in my opinion, the goggles are not worth it without those features. So it's finally good to see these features making their way over from just being able to be used with the Mavic and now with some other DJI drones. The rest of the changes are slight optimizations for Droney and Helix. I swear in every single update that's been coming for the Spark, I've seen optimizations, two different quick shots here and there, and it's great to see DJI perfecting one of these brand new features they've added with the Spark. Now finally, I want to end this video off by talking about a pop-up that I received through the DJI Go application once I started up my Spark. Here's the screenshot that I took. Uh, you guys can read it if you'd like. I'm not going to sit here and read it to you. But from the small excerpt, we gather that the 0600 update that contains battery improvements is mandatory. They give us until September 1st to update, and as far as the consequences, if we don't upgrade, I really don't know. If I had to guess, probably the same limitations on height and distance that they threatened with drones like the Mavic and Phantom series. Now, every time I give my opinion on something like this, I get crucified down in the comments, so this time, I'm going to try to stay neutral. Now, sometimes mandatory updates can be seen as useful for a couple of different reasons. First of all, there could be crucial fixes to errors within the code that could basically send the drone haywire. I mean, basically, just code being cleaned up so that the drone runs better, and also to catch everyone up to the latest version. I personally have no problem being on the most up-to-date software on all of my devices, really. Hell, on all of my Apple products, on my MacBook, my iPad, as well as my iPhone. I have the iOS 11 beta installed and the Mac OS High Sierra beta installed. Uh, so I usually like to be ahead of the curve. But in all seriousness, I do understand why some people get upset about having to do mandatory updates on their drones or really on any of their devices. Sometimes people just like to stick on that firmware that they're on and not be ultimately punished. Uh, but usually, in my opinion, being on the most up-to-date software will benefit you and also just kind of gives you the most access to some of the newest features. An analogy that I want to make that I actually just thought of uh, has to do with ransomware. For those of you who aren't familiar with ransomware, it's basically a malicious software that gets installed on your computer that takes all of your files for ransom. If you pay that ransom money, then you get all of your files back, but really who knows if you even get your files back when you pay that ransom. Uh, so anyway, in this instance, when Microsoft would come out with some sort of mandatory update to prevent you from actually installing this malicious software, I'm sure a lot of people probably wouldn't mind it, and in this case, you know, DJI is possibly coming out with this mandatory update because they fixed something in the battery's firmware uh, that basically would prevent the drone from crashing and it not being the pilot's fault. Now, I'm not saying this is the reason that DJI came out and implemented this mandatory update, but as you know, sparks were basically falling from the sky. Whether it was a problem with the battery, whether it was a problem with the actual drone itself, I really didn't read up all that much on it, but I know that sometimes mandatory updates in this case can be necessary. Anyway, that does it for this quick overview of the Spark firmware update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.